DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from Coast to Coast present... Groucho Marx. If you bet your life. And here he is, the one, the only... What a bounder. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $3,000 for one of our couples. If any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is chair on the lamb duck. <laughs> Mr. Fenneman, proceed with the Inquisition. All right, Groucho, first tonight we have Mr. Bert Stewart, who has some interesting experiences he'd like to tell you about. He does. His he partner does. is a special guest, Mrs. Edgar R. Hill. And here they are. Folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for your bet your life. Say the secret word and uh, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house, assuming that you have a house. Mrs. Hill, I'll start with you. Where are you from, Mrs. Hill? I am originally from Chicago. I was born on Wabash Avenue on the south side of Chicago. Oh, on the banks of the Wabash, eh? <laughs> I used to live in Calumet in uh, 46. Are you familiar with that neighborhood? Yes. We ran us out of there. Now, Fenneman, <laughs> Fenneman says you're a special guest. Is, is that because you were born in Chicago, or do you have some other distinction? Well, no. I, I think it's probably because I'm the uh, mayor of Newport Beach. California. The mayor. Well, Your Honor, we're honored to have you here. Yeah, you know, I should imagine a lady mayor is, is fairly rare. Were you elected in a smoke-filled room or a perfume-filled room? No, I, I was just elected in the ordinary way, and it just happens in our city, uh, the uh, councilman polling the largest number of votes uh, is named mayor by the uh, remainder of the council. Yeah. Well, you're a pretty cute-looking mayor, you know. <laughs> Thank you. The average mayor doesn't look that way. <laughs> I've heard that you have a major problem with teenagers every year at Newport Beach. <clears throat> Do you have any comments to make about the gay parties that go on down there? Well, I don't know. It seems that uh, every year during Easter vacation, the um, teenagers of all, of, of all Southern California think they ought to uh, go down to Balboa, which is a part of Newport Beach. Mm -hmm. They say they go to Bal at Easter week. Mm -hmm. And our city, is uh, we have about 18,000 in population, and they estimated that we had about 35,000 young people last year. We, we think that the problem wouldn't be so great if we could change this to, into a, an, a family week at Easter time and make it a family holiday. Let the kids stay home and just the parents come down? <laughs> no, we'd like the parents with the children. Oh. Well, it's a big problem all over the country, and I say you don't have any solution. However, there's one thing I'd like to say to all the teenagers who are tuned in right now. How can you study algebra and listen to me at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> now then, uh, who are you again? Uh, Bert Stewart. Bert Stewart, huh? Where are you from, Brady? I was born uh, and raised about 30 miles south of Raleigh, North Carolina, on a tobacco farm, got you. Oh, that's in Virginia, isn't it? No, it's North Carolina. I thought they raised the tobacco in Virginia. Well, that... Uh, Where do they raise the filters, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that would be a good business to get into. <laughs> well, uh, did you become a tobacco farmer? I understand they're endorsing doctors now, most of them. <laughs> no, Groucho, after I became a, a man of my own, I left home and did various things. I worked in the service station, was a quartermaster on a freight boat in the Ch Chesapeake Bay, Bouncer in the nightclubs, furniture salesman, short order cook, various other things. Wow, you have had a, a varied life, haven't you, huh? Well, you were restless, huh? Yes, you might call it that. Uh, well, I will. <laughs> Did you ever try going into business for yourself, Bate? Yes, I went into in the business when I came out of the Air Force. And were you a Green pilot? North Carolina. Yes, sir. You I pilot? was a pilot. Mm -hmm. And uh, on one occasion, I went on the... Uh, uh, tangent trying to sell chicken box lunches to a football audience in the University of North Carolina and Georgia was playing up there and they had about 40,000 people and I figured I could sell chicken box lunches to all of them and I and what fixed happened? Up, fixed up 2,000 chicken box lunches and arrived at a football game just two hours too late so I was stuck with 2,000 chicken box lunches. <laughs> 
<laughs> What'd you do with these 2,000 surplus chickens? Did you sell them to an Army and Navy store? No, I was afraid that they were, were spoiled and we had to uh, get rid of them. <laughs> well, what, what was your next business venture, Bert? If this keeps up, I may <coughs> burst into tears. And... I'm making sink reamers, Grancho. Sink reamers? Well, that's more like it. <laughs> What's a sink reamer? A sink reamer? <laughs> a sink reamer is a device for adapting an old cast enamel sink so that a lady can have a garbage disposal installed in the sink without having to take the sink out and replace it with a new one. Well, how did you happen to get into this kind of business? Well, I saw the operation being performed, and I was interested in it. It, it looked uh, like it would be uh, something to get into. Mm. <coughs> and I, uh, That's a nice, messy thought, isn't it? I did a bit of research on it, and uh, found that 40% of all the garbage disposals were being sold, and the was sold in the nation, were being sold here in California. I'm glad we have so much garbage here. And, uh, <laughs> you know, New York and may have the Catskills, and Minnesota may have the lakes, but we've got more garbage than any other state. <laughs> no other state can make that statement. <laughs> well, this has indeed been an experience talking to you two. Now let's see how much money you can make. You're going to play your bet your life. Remember, we start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. No matter what it amounts to at the time. Uh, is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Now you select a biblical quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to start with? And remember your partners and talk it over. One answer between you. Let's start with $100. $100? Well, $100? $100 will be all right. Then. Okay. In the Genesis account of the creation, on what day was the land made? Second. 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 Second day? Second day, I believe. Come on, kids. Second day. No, I'm sorry. It was the third day. <laughs> you lost half your original hundred dollars. You now have fifty dollars. Ninety. Ninety dollars. In which book of the Bible are the Ten Commandments found? Leviticus. Talk it over. Leviticus. 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 One answer. Leviticus. Okay. Leviticus. No, I'm sorry. It's the Exodus. Ooh, How much have they got? Oh, you don't have Exodus. half of 50 or $25. All right, now you've got $25. What are you going to try? <laughs> who was the father of Ham, Shem, and Japheth? The two brothers, the one who went away. Cain killed Abel. And the Abel. Come on, time's up, Abel kid. Cain. Cain. Uh, no, Cain was killed. Cain. Abel. Abel. No, it was Noah. All right, you're you stuck lost, uh, lost half your 25 and I'll have 12.50. Well, they're, they're gamesters. You're going to take the 70? 70. What is referred to as the Decalogue? Talk it over. The Decalogue? <laughs> is that the uh, first 10 books of the year? Uh, no. First 10 books? Oh, hell, you got me in TV. No answer. No comment? Well, it's the Ten Commandments. You wind up with uh, six dollars and twenty-five cents. Uh. <laughs> I'm going to give you one question to get it right, and we bring your winnings up to twenty-five. What time is it when both hands point to twelve? Twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock oh, is right. I'm sorry. Thank you. And now, here are some more scenes from Groucho's European trip this summer. Here I am in La Belle France. And this is one vehicle it wouldn't be safe to hold a candle to. Speaking of holding candles, the great new DeSoto for 1955 is coming your way, so don't you miss it. That's the brand new DeSoto, on display Wednesday, November 17th. Your very first chance to see this stylish new DeSoto. Wednesday, November 17th. Here I am in London, and of course they don't speak English very well over here. And this spelling is rather curious. But this is just a reminder to be around when we show you the brand new, grand new DeSoto for 1955. For the very first time on this show. Yes, really we are. In any language, that date is Wednesday, November 17th. Don't miss it. Your first chance to see the stunning new DeSoto. Well, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Bill Early to be on the show, Groucho. His partner is a public relations consultant, Miss Joan Rosenthal. So folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. 
Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide the hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Bill Ailey and Joan Rosenthal, eh? Joan, where are you from? Well, I live in a suburb of Chicago called Glencoe, Illinois. Glencoe? Mm -hmm. How old are you, Joan? 26. 26. Mm -hmm. Well, young look, that's a lovely age. Especially if you happen to be 38. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Miss or Mrs.? Uh... Well, I'm afraid it's Miss. Well, if you're afraid, I'm not surprised it's Miss. Huh? <laughs> Very attractive. Now, what is the reason you're single, Joan? Well, nice looking girl, young girl, pretty I hair, teeth. I don't really know. Slim. I keep asking myself, why am I still single? Well, stop asking yourself and ask somebody else. <laughs> get better results that way. Uh, Would you like to get married? Yes, I'd like to. Mm -hmm. Why? Any particular reason? Well, I'd like to have a family. Mm -hmm. Have you choice. Have you looked for a husband? Yes, I've been looking. Well, you're honest about it. <laughs> Most girls, when they're not married, even if they're attractive, they say, no, I don't want to get married. Where have you looked specifically for a husband? Well, uh, I've looked in Chicago and New York, Los Angeles, Baltimore, Kansas City, St. Louis. You've got a bigger Virginia. drag net out than Jack Webb. <laughs> Mr. Ailey, I bet you've had a lot of proposals, Joan, haven't you? Well... You've yeah. had a number of them, haven't you? Yeah. You just haven't found anybody that you like yet. And I admire you for that. Because most girls at 26 are so panicky. They're afraid they're not going to get a fellow. That they grab the first yokel that comes along. Eh? <laughs> and I, I admire you for having high standards. Well, thank you. And you've, uh, I bet you'll wind up with just the boy you want. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ailey, you look like a fellow gets around. I don't know what you get around, but you look like a, <laughs> you look like a fellow who gets around. Maybe you could help Joan find a, a, a spouse. What sort of work do you do? Well, I buy cattle uh, for armory <laughs> company. <laughs> well, I doubt if you can do Joan any good. <laughs> Where do you buy your cattle? Oh, I buy most anywhere I can find them. We go out looking for them. Our, uh, On the highway? Oh, no. Our, uh, our main buying office is at the stockyards, Union Stockyards. What do you do with these cows after you buy them? Well, we... Take uh, them home? No, we slaughter them, dress them, and uh, sell them, hope to get our money back. Mm -hmm. You've got to, uh, to get your money back, you can't miss them too far. The tolerance is supposed to be about one half of one percent. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, if, uh, for instance, uh, the cattle have uh, some water in that you don't detect, they can drink quite a lot of water. Say, you need watered stock there? Yeah, it'd be watered stock. Say 40 pounds. I had some watered stock in Wall Street once. Is it anything like that? It's about the same, in the same category. Well, 40 pounds of water that you don't see at 20 cents a pound is uh, $8. Uh -huh. That's more than we hope to make when we buy them, you see, and we don't want to make that mistake. Well, how do you know if the, if the cow is waterlogged or not? Well, you follow them around uh, all night to see if they're not drinking? It'd be all right if you could, but you don't well, always do you know. Do you well, shake they, them, see they, if they make a noise? <laughs> they, can, they can conceal it pretty well. How? Oh. Uh, they have four stomachs, you know. Well, can't you shake them? No, they, they're a little big for that. Mm. Let's get back to you, Joan. What sort of work do you do? Well, I travel around and talk to women about their hair and advise them on what kind of permanents to use and how to groom their hair. Mm. Home permanents, huh? Yes. You know how to avoid falling hair, huh? Well, no, not You exactly. step nimbly to one side. That's no water. Well, is the home permanent a fairly new invention, Joan? Well, um, Tony has really made it a mass uh, market product, but actually uh, we've heard that women have been trying to curl their hair for years, and we've heard that Cleopatra even tried to give herself a home permanent. She took uh, her hair and rolled it on a twig and then took the Took mud. it off, you mean? No, just from her, right on her head. And then took the mud from the Nile and plastered it on the twig. And, of course, when it dried, she had curly hair, but it was a little messy. Mm. <laughs> well, they were all plastered on that barge, weren't they? <laughs> Joan, I could tell you a story right now that would curl your hair and you wouldn't need any more. <laughs> Well, enough of this talk about hair and cattle. Let's play your bet your life, huh? We start you off with $100, but if you miss a question, you lose half your total. Is that clear? That's clear.
At this point in the race for the $3,000, the first couple leads with $6.25. The secret word is chair. Bill, your first question has nothing to do with the quiz, but answer it anyway. Have you uh, read any good books lately? No, not just recently, no. Well, it's, it's not important. I just want to be sure the next book you read is one about one of the most fascinating, charming, clever characters in all literature. You know who that is? No, it's who me. Is that? <laughs> George, would you mind telling him about it? Well, Mo uh, modesty <laughs> prevents me from going any further. <laughs> Skeptic over there that's going to get fired. <laughs> it seems that uh, Groucho's son Arthur has written a book uh, entitled Life with Groucho, published by Simon and Schuster at sale at all bookstores all over the country. Considering the subject matter, I think my son Arthur has done a very good job on this, and I think you'll enjoy it. You'll see the seamier side of Groucho. Huh? <laughs> all right, well, let's play You Bet Your Life. Huh? How much are you going to start with? Start with 70. 70 or 80, whatever you want. 80? All right, $80. What do you call the wife of an earl? E-A-R-L. Countess. <laughs> Easy the question, the little the money. Harder the question, the bigger the dough. Okay. okay. How much? 90. 90. If a pentagon has five sides, how many sides does a dexagon have? Decagon. Decagon, it's baby talk. D-E-C-A-G-O-N, decagon. 10. That is correct. You now have two hundred seventy dollars. Two hundred? Oh boy, that's my record. Uh, come on, I'm trying to wait. A hundred dollars. Right. How many acres in a square mile? Oh, I know that one. Well, you sure you're yeah. in the cattle business? Yeah, but I, I can't go off the square mile. Talk it over. Square. A square mile. A square mile. A square mile. How many acres? That's a section. That's six hundred and forty. 640. 640 is absolutely right. And you now have $370. Now what are you going to go now for? Now we've got to be careful. This is your last chance to be the other couple. It took 70? Yeah, that is $70. What was the name of the Venetian traveler who was famous for his journeys through Asia and for his dealings with Kublai Khan? Marco Polo. You go ahead. Marco Polo. Marco Polo grounds is right. <laughs> And you wind up with $440. Thanks and good luck to the DeSoto Plymouth You'll have a husband by midnight. Before we go ahead, I want to show you another scene from our European trip. This is an old Roman tradition that was started by the boys who clean these fountains. But don't you throw your money away. Don't even look at another car until you see the great new DeSoto for 1955. Coming your way soon. Soon is right, Groucho. Wednesday, November 17th, is your first chance to see the stunning new DeSoto for 1955. Wednesday, November 17th. Well, Groucho, George, who's next? I was just going to tell you, we invited some... Now, what was the name of that book again? Which book? The uh, book of my son. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which book? You <laughs> Benedict Arnold, you. Uh, Life with Groucho. <laughs> Wow. You've been badly trained, George. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Groucho, we invited some high school boys from a special school to our show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Carol Hall to be on the show. His partner is a special guest, Miss Indra Davy. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Indra Devi, is that right? Davy. Davy, eh? and Carol Hall. Yes, sir. That's a very unusual outfit you have on, uh, Indra. Is it a smock or a kimono, or what do you call it? Neither. It is a sari. A sari? Well, you don't have to be sari. You can wear anything you like in this show. <laughs> right? Why are you sari, uh, Indra? I'm not sorry. No. But I wear a sari. Oh. Well, why do you wear a sari? Because I lived in India very long, and I adopted India as my motherland, and I like the Indian attire. Oh. It's five and a half yards of a long material, and you drop, drape yourself into it. I see. Well, it's charming, huh? Thank you. Which part of India were you, were you born in? Well, I was born in Riga, Latvia. In Latvia? Isn't that that's in Europe, isn't it? Yes, nothing to do with India. No, well, I'm confused. I thought you were born in India. No. On the Burma Road. 
No. <laughs> on the bain or something. <laughs> now, uh, what is what is your name, uh, Carol Hall? Carol Hall, huh? <coughs> Sounds like an apartment <coughs> house. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Carol? Sixteen. Sixteen. How did you meet your wife, uh, Carol? <laughs> I'm not married. You're not married? Actually, I assumed you weren't married, but you see, I asked everybody that question, and I did, just didn't want you to feel slighted, that's all. <laughs> However, if you insist on giving me a shifty answer, that's your business. <laughs> I, I assume you go to school, eh, Carol? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Where do you uh, hibernate? <laughs> I go to Boys Republic at Chino. The Boys Republic? What is that? Is that a, did a group of you youngsters get together and secede from the union? Well, it's a self-governing school and farm for boys which have never had a real home. Oh. oh, I see. Well, you mentioned something about a farm. Do you sell butter and eggs to the public? No, sir. Uh, we make the Delarobia Christmas wreaths for most of the profit. Oh, I see. What do these wreaths look like? Well, they've got seven or eight different types of pods and fruit mixed in together. Real fruit? Yes. And you can eat this fruit? Yes. How much do you get for these wreaths? Well, the reefs run from five dollars to nine dollars. Hmm. Well, I'll I'll take three of those. Eh? Will you send me three of them? Take one for my master, one for my dame, and one for the redhead that lives across the street. <laughs> now, Mrs. Debbie, let's get back to you. Do you have a job? Well, I am teaching yoga. In yoga? My Isn't he a baseball player? <laughs> He's with that team that used to win the pennant all the time. <laughs> what were they called? The Yonkers? Uh, <laughs> Yankees or something like that? No, <laughs> I'm teaching yoga exercises in my studio on Sunset, and I'm lecturing on yoga. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Well, what is yoga, Indra? Can you tell us in a few words? Well, yoga is a system of physical, mental, and spiritual training, which originated in India. Uh -huh. And the yogis believe that the deep breathing is the basis for their training. And when you breathe in, they believe in breathing in the cosmic energy. Mm. You breathe deep, in other words. Oh, it? yes, it is a deep breathing. Well, that might be all right in India, but if you breathe deep here, you're liable to wind up in a cemetery, huh? <laughs> I got up last week and went to the window and took ten deep breaths and went back to bed for three days. <laughs> well, there must be more to yoga than just, just breathing, isn't there? Yes, Could you certainly. tell us some more about it? Well... There may be a lot of yogiites out front tonight. <laughs> if I took up yoga, what would I have to do? Well, if you were to become a yogi, you would first afford to give up your cigar. <laughs> well, I don't smoke much. I just smoke during the day, that's all. I... <laughs> well, I could give up smoking. What else would I have to well, relinquish? A yogi would not drink. If you take drinks, you'll have to give them up, too. I don't drink much. Is that all there is to it? Oh, no. Much more. There's more to it, huh? Much more. To it. Let's skip it, huh? <laughs> well, you give up fried food for it. Fried food to something else again, huh? <laughs> now let's play an old-fashioned American game called You Bet Your Life. In the race for the three thousand dollars, the second couple is now leading with four hundred forty dollars. All right, you selected science and medicine. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder the question is. What are you going to start with? You say. All of it. A uh, hundred dollars? Yeah. All of it. All right, oh, that's that... the hardest one. The bigger the uh, sum, the harder the question. Oh, we'll is. take half of it then. All right, half. <laughs> what do you call the loss of memory? <clears throat> the loss of memory? Memory. If you lose your memory, what is that called? Amnesia. That's right, amnesia. Uh, what you, question do you want? You have $150 now. $150. You now. have it. 60. 60. If a weatherman wanted to measure atmospheric pressure, what instrument would he use? Talk it over. Yes. Thermometer? No, I'm sorry. It's a barometer. 
You had 150, you lost half, you now have $75. All right, now don't get discouraged. Now, what are you going to try this time? 30. 30. What do you call the device that is twisted around the arm or leg to stop bleeding? Tourniquet. Tourniquet is right. Now I have $105. Now what are you going to try? 40, I guess. The green coloring matter in plants is called what? Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is right. <laughs> you wind up with $145. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Well, thank you. Thank you. That means that Miss Joan Rosenthal and Mr. Early, with $440 in just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. Well, let's take a minute to get away from it all and back to Italy. You may think these boys are all statues, but you're wrong. They're just waiting until they can get their first look at the stylish new DeSoto. Why don't you pull up a pedestal and join us? Until you can get your first chance to see the stylish DeSoto for 1955. Tell them when, George. Wednesday, November 17th. That's your very first chance to see the 1955 DeSoto. Don't miss it. Wednesday, November 17th. I just gave that battleship 10 minutes to get out of town. Incidentally, this is about the only road you won't be able to travel in the brand new, wonderful DeSoto for 1955. It's coming your way Wednesday, November 17th. The stylish 1955 DeSoto. So watch for it Wednesday, November 17th. Here's our winning couple, Groucho, Miss Rosenthal and Mr. Early, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. All right, here we go for $3,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. Here it is. One of the most famous buildings in the world was the Temple of Athena, built around 400 years B.C. on the Acropolis of Athens. For $3,000, by what name do we know this famous temple Parts of which still remain. Talk it over. Okay, you tell me. Parthenon. It's a Parthenon. That is absolutely right. It's a Parthenon. Don't worry, Jane. <laughs> you win three thousand dollars between you. Don't worry. You want to get married pretty soon, Jane. <laughs> What's how much in the quiz, George? Uh, $440 in the quiz. Now, the, how, how much do they each uh, have now, George? Well, all together they have $3,440. And you split that right down split the middle. Split that in half. And what is it, George? I have no idea. <laughs> well, it's $1,720 a piece, George. You see? Well, uh, thanks. Uh, what are you going to do with all that money? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. And you? What are you oh, going to do? Oh, I think I'll uh, give it to my favorite charity. That's my wife. <laughs> Congratulations from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. You bet your life. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television. On radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. signing off with a message from the National Safety Council. Don't be a wacky walker. Remember to walk safely. Your life depends on it.